from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Patrick, and I'm the director of the Veterans History Project. I want to welcome you to the 10th. Thank you. Thank you. I want to welcome you to the 10th year commemoration of the Veterans History Project. Would you please stand for the playing of the national anthem? Please be seated. Would you please join me in showing your appreciation to the members of the United States Air Force Band? And now it's my distinct privilege and pleasure to introduce the 13th Librarian of Congress, Dr. James H. Billington. And it's my distinct pleasure to introduce um, Senator Richard Lugar. Uh, ranking member, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, um, who has actively supported the Veterans History Project since it began, his own enthusiasm for it, the work he's put in by his staff, both in Washington and in the state, directly led to contributing more than 8,000 interviews to the, the library's collection. Uh, he even stopped the Indianapolis Speedway for one, for one event that was unforgettable. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he honors us by being here tonight between two votes in the Senate. So we're going to begin with him, and I know you all want to welcome one of the great supporters of this enterprise, Senator Richard. And I'll mention the gym is right there at the Speedway. Stop, stop the cars and stop the music and recognize the veterans. I apologize for rushing in and out. We're between two roll call votes in the Senate, and I, I thank my colleagues for allowing me to go first this evening. But I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to join all of you who are gathered here tonight to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Veterans History Project. I appreciate especially Dr. Billington's kind introduction, and it's important to note the remarkable growth of the Veterans History Project over the last 10 years would not have been possible without his important leadership and stewardship all the way. Let me just say that he has collaborated with Colonel Bob Patrick, and we are delighted to have seen that remarkable partnership. I'm also pleased to be joined here by Catherine Lurch of the Park Tudor School in Indianapolis, who along with her students has partnered with my office in interviewing countless veterans. Also with us is Brian Markle of Frankfurt, Indiana. Brian and his wife, Jean, have both had memories of their experiences in the service preserved here at the Library of Congress as part of the Veterans History Project. This celebration is especially timely in light of my visit on Monday with Matthew Kinsey, a paratrooper from Rockville, Indiana, who tragically lost his right foot while leading his team during his second deployment in Afghanistan. Matthew, like so many service members, is a bright, capable young man who volunteered 
to join the armed forces at a time of great turmoil around the world. He knew he would have to deploy in short order. He prepared for that deployment with vigor. After his first 15 months in Afghanistan, Matthew returned to Fort Bragg and his unit quickly uh, resumed preparation for his second deployment. I know this rapid tempo was difficult for Matthew and his fellow soldiers, as well as for their loved ones, such as Matthew's lovely mother, Sherry. Since early June, Sherry has joined the remarkably capable doctors, nurses, and therapists at Walter Reed Memorial Hospital in, in caring for Matthew, unless he were to show you his prosthesis. One would not be able to tell that Matthew had been wounded so grievously just four months ago. He has moved to a point of being able to run two miles. In spite of the challenges that Matthew faced in his service and the many challenges he now faces in his rehabilitation, it was humbling to see the dedication that he continues to show for his, for his rehabilitation and now at age 25, his preparation to resume studies next fall. Future generations of Americans have much to learn from Matthew's commitment to the nation he volunteered to serve, as well as to revive or, and, and to show at each of his undertakings his remarkable devotion. It's for this reason that I ask a member of my staff to sit down with Matthew and his mother so that his story could be preserved as part of the Veterans History Project. His story, along with those of nearly now 9,000 500 other Hoosiers have been collected by my staff and partner organizations, and they will serve as a resource for generations of family members, academics, and all Americans who simply want to learn more about those who have served our nation so well in uniform. I remember fondly the day eight years ago when I delivered the 500th interview from Indiana to the Veterans History Project. We are now just 500 interviews short of 10,000. I look forward. <laughs> I look forward to each additional opportunity to work with the Library of Congress and Dr. Billing on this important project. And I wish each of you continuing success in your important service and scholarship to our country. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Senator Lugar, one of our great internationalists in so many, many respects, and for your leadership and your wonderful example. So it's my opportunity to wish you good evening um, and welcome, of course, here to the Library of Congress. We're honored to have with us this evening veterans from all of the military services. And I think we might ask by asking if the veterans would all stand as they are able and receive a small measure of our appreciation for their sacrifice and for their service to our nation. So would the veterans in the audience please stand. The Library of Congress has within these walls the voice of many Americans, presidents, statesmen, scientists, whether it's in written, recorded, or filmed form. And thanks to the people in this hall tonight and many others, uh, the Library of Congress has during the past decade been able to add the voices of the men and women of all ranks and of all services of our armed forces. So I want to express my thanks as Librarian of Congress to each of you who are gathered here this evening for contributing to one of the most important collection building ever, efforts ever undertaken at the Library of Congress. We have, made, uh, we have made what was originally envisaged as a limited effort of a few years into a fully established ongoing program of the library. We've worked hard to apply the traditional requirements of librarianship, that is, acquisitions, cataloging, preserving, and accessing, to apply all that to this unique collection that is uh, so that it is stable and it's sustainable over the long term. 
The Veterans History Project now has well over 70,000 individual collections with 100 to 200 new collections coming in each week. We've digitized more than 8,800 uh, Veterans History Project collections, making accessible on the library's widely used website thousands of photographs, letters, maps, audio and video recorded interviews. Now this is already a historically important collection and it will have permanent and I think growing impact on how the history of warfare will be written in the future and for the history of America in general. In recent months, we've taken in about the same number of new collections that we have been serving up to researchers. As we continue to gather in these collections, content is now and will increasingly go out in the form of books, documentary work of all kinds that reaches across the nation and indeed the globe. This year, the collections have been used to study such diverse topics as the incidents of malaria in World War II, the efforts to identify the remains of the Kam Kamchatka flyers from that war and other MIAs, and in the History Channel's recent web features on VE and VJ, VJ days. <clears throat> A recently published book, Through Veterans' Eyes, the Iraq and Afghan Afghanistan Experience, relies heavily on approximately 100 interviews from our collections of these current conflicts. Thanks to all of you here, we have a strong and growing network of contributors spanning the nation. You'll hear from some of them tonight. Every day in places across the United States, Veterans History Project interviews and related events are taking place in homes, in libraries such as the National Public Library and high schools like Medina High School in Ohio or Nina High, High School in Wisconsin, in museums such as San Diego Veterans Museum in California or the Warhawk Museum in Idaho, in Red Cross centers and in more than 50 VA medical centers across the country. The Department of Defense Commission will soon be making the Veterans History Project an important part of the national commemoration ne next year of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. The Veterans History Project by its very nature is dependent on the continuing and growing enthusiasm and dedication of people like Carl Fowler from New Jersey, David Meyer O'Shea from California who performed hundreds of interviews and who are both here with us tonight. We will continue to need the critical contributions also of groups and remarkable people like the transcribers of the National Court the Reporters uh, Association. I do not believe that there is a precedent in this institution's 210-year history. Uh, we're the oldest federal cultural institution in America. I do not believe there's any precedent for members of Congress making such direct personal contributions towards building a library collection as we have seen for the Veterans History Project. More than half of all members of the House and Senate have participated in the Veterans History Project. Uh, members here tonight have hosted Veterans History Project training workshops, conducted interviews themselves with veterans, shared their own stories, and have worked with their local educational institutions to encourage the young people to interview the older veterans, to build this intergenerational sense of uh, something which they may not have been as directly aware of as they become when they find a relative or neighbor or someone who is able to open up and talk to them and remind them of the sacrifices and service of other generations. <clears throat> a map upstairs will show that the Veterans History Project collection has recorded interviews from every congressional district. The success of this program simply could not have been possible without the personal involvement of members, including some here tonight and their colleagues. Uh, so um, I would conclude by also thanking the hardworking managers and staff of the Veterans History Project under Bob Patrick's inspired, continuous, and extraordinary leadership. <laughs> These are really dedicated public servants, and they've ably met the many challenges, the rapidly building of a multi-format collection that includes 
what is already the most extensive oral history archive in American history, and indeed uh, adding things even beyond the oral history so that however memory, however uh, sacrifice, however uh, service uh, was registered in the various times of war and combat in our history, uh, recent history, um, they are, uh, have honored places in this collection. You know, I don't sign when I sign for an acquisition for the Library of Congress. Uh, this humbled me the first time I confronted it some years ago when I was, took this job. I don't sign for the Library of Congress. I sign for the United States of America. And I never think it's more appropriate than when we sign in a new, a new example of the wonderful contributions that you've all helped us make uh, for the Veterans History Project. Ladies and gentlemen, the Congress of the United States has been the greatest patron of a library in the history of the world. So it's going to be my distinct pleasure to introduce some, a few of the esteemed members of Congress who have developed, nurtured, and continue to support this whole important project for America. You've already heard from Senator Lugar, and uh, former Senator Chuck Hagel of Nebraska has been extremely active in the Veterans History Project. And although he could not join us tonight, he has sent a message for us, which will be, which will be uh, a brief video, and then we'll have uh, some further uh, remarks. Good evening. I'm Chuck Hagel, former United States Senator from Nebraska. Ten years ago, I had the privilege of co-writing the Veterans History Project with my dear friend, former Senate colleague, a great American patriot and veteran, Max Cleland. We undertook that project because we thought it was important for Americans, all Americans, and especially future generations to understand the contributions and the sacrifices that our men and women have made over the years uh, to continue to build our country, to give all Americans opportunities, to sustain the strength of our country, and to, in fact, not just live up to, but build onto the ideals of what we are about. Uh, future generations need to understand these men and women. Uh, what motivated them? Why did they do it? Uh, what was inside these men and women uh, when they went off to serve their country? Thank you all tonight for what you're doing, what you continue to do, your leadership, your strong support. In particular, I want to thank the Library of Congress uh, for taking this project up years ago, for making this project a real significant part uh, of their agenda of important projects and also making it such a big American project for so many people. I also want to encourage all of you tonight to continue to support uh, the efforts of the Library of Congress and all of you who've done so much. Uh, be involved in, in some additional way. Tell your story for the veterans there tonight who've not told uh, your story. Uh, so many ways you can participate. Uh, obviously, uh, you can give money, but it's bigger than just writing a check. We can do that. Uh, all of us can do that. But uh, opportunities like expanding the knowledge base and the exposure of the Veterans History Project uh, would add to it. Uh, I think this is one of these great American projects uh, that touches uh, all of our country, allows all of our citizens to be part of something. Uh, of great and noble purpose. Again, thank you, and thank you again uh, for giving me an opportunity to be with you tonight. Have a great evening, and I will see you uh, either in the Library of Congress uh, or, or somewhere. Well, we've, um, we've heard from the Senate. Um, and now my pleasure to introduce Representative Ron Kine. He has served the 3rd District of Wisconsin since 1997. As you all know, Congressman Kine conceived the Veterans History Project as a result of the stories told by veterans in his own family. Uh, he's been a consistent and inspiring person to be present at almost every important occasion that this, as this project has unfolded, and it is a very Great pleasure to have him here. Welcome. Thank you, Representative Kine, for being here again this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the inventor and the ever cheerful and efficient friend.
friend of this entire project <laughs> all through it. Representative, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Billington. Colonel Bob Patrick, distinguished uh, guests and veterans who are with us here this evening, welcome and happy anniversary. It is truly hard to believe it's been 10 years already. Wow, how time has flown. But I, I may have had a, a role in introducing the legislation, penning the language, but it was really a, an idea whose time had come. And I think we still hold the record for the quickest introduction of legislation that was ultimately signed into law by a president in the history of the U.S. Congress, roughly a two-week period from the moment we introduced it. And of course, my good friend and colleague, Zach Womp, was an original sponsor of the legislation, and he's taken it to great lengths in his home state in Tennessee. He's also co-chair of the Congressional uh, uh, Caucus, uh, the, the uh, Library of Congress Caucus with, with Earl Blumenauer. We had original sponsors, uh, Emma Houghton, who many of you may recall, and Steny Hoyer on the House side, and of course, Senators Chuck Hagel and Max Cleveland, who ushered it through on the Senate side. And it was a good project to get started because it's really the last ask of a grateful nation to our veterans, those who served our nation, to share with us and for future generations what it was like to serve our country. And I guess the, the genesis of the idea, the spark that led me to bring this idea out to Washington was uh, Father's Day weekend, sitting at the picnic table with my dad, Korea generation, and his brother, my uncle, who fought bombing missions uh, in the Pacific during the, during the Second World War. And they started talking about their experience in the service for the very first time with me. And my two little boys were just toddlers at the time, and so I told dad and Uncle Donnie, wait a second, as I ran into the house, I grabbed the family video camera, set it up on the picnic table, and then I said, now start because I want to record this for Johnny and Matthew's benefit when they get older. And I got to thinking, you know, with the technology that we have available today and how precious the time is we have with so many of our veterans, we should be doing this nationwide. And with the great leadership of Dr. Billington, the, the fantastic team of professionals, with Colonel Patrick's leadership here in, in the Library of Congress and all of you that have been in, involved with the program, none of us could have possibly imagined where it could be today. Uh, I, I, I what, listened very carefully to Dr. Billington claim that this is the nation's largest oral history project, but I'm a politician, so I'm able to stretch the facts a little bit, and so I say it's actually the world's largest oral history collection, and I'll continue to say that until proven otherwise, until someone, someone shows me some facts uh, otherwise. I just want to share, and, and I'm sure everyone has their own stories about that. We just heard Senator Luger share his and talk about the state of Indiana and what he's done there. But a couple of weekends ago, as I always do, I went to see an Honor Freedom flight off from La Crosse, Wisconsin, where they were sending World War II veterans out to Washington so they could finally visit their World War II memorial. And I met a family there who was there to see their 92-year-old father-grandfather off on this freedom flight. He was in the Italian campaign later in Western Europe. 92 years old, giddy as a schoolboy, because he had never flown his entire life. There was transport ships during the Second World War, so he was excited just getting on a plane and coming out to Washington. But they told me that, that they sat him down about a week earlier and recorded his story uh, for the Veterans History Project. And they were really glad they did that because he came home and it was an exhausting long day trip that he took. The next day he was pretty much bedridden, tired, exhausted from the occasion. But apparently a smile from ear to ear they later told me uh, about the experience, uh, the trip, and how much it meant to him. The following day he passed away. So it was in the nick of time that they were finally able to record his story. And given the fact that we're losing roughly 1,700 veterans, mainly of the World War II and Korea generation, I think it was right and proper for the library to have special focus and outreach with that generation before, before it's too late. So we are looking forward to continuing to work with the Library of Congress. We couldn't think of a better place to house the Veterans History Project and one of the great national treasures we have as a nation uh, here uh, in the U.S. Capitol, here at the Library of Congress and with the professional staff. So look forward to continuing to collect the story, to protect and preserve it, uh, not only for our nation's history, but especially for future generation. So they may never forget the sacrifice that was given to their nation and why we are uh, the nation we are today. So congratulations, happy anniversary, and we look forward to another great 10 years coming up. Thank you all. And finally, I'd like 
if, if not uh, Congressman Womp from Tennessee would be willing to say, he, uh, I just mentioned one quick thing uh, about his uh, support uh, for interest in this program. He pioneered the idea of, of having some interviews going in one of the veterans' hospitals, um, which was in his, his district, and it was a very moving experience. I, I was had the honor of just being there for this on this particular occasion, and it's something we've repeated since. It's been very meaningful, and it's a so it was. It, it, this is a project that you can you can conduct anywhere. But he was the pioneer on the very memorable visit to Chattanooga in in taking this project into uh, and interviewing uh, veterans, and then following it up with a with an amazing campaign over a couple of years to really spread the news. So uh, Mr. Womp, who's also a, a great shortstop, as we had a great quarterback, we seem to, <laughs> we seem to attract athletes uh, who are recording the bigger fights that have, were fought out there as well. So Congressman Womp. Thank you, Thank you. <clears throat> so, so it's an honor to be in the great hall of the Jefferson Building of the Library of Congress. This is an extraordinary place. It's bittersweet for me tonight because in a few legislative days, I'll be leaving the Congress after 16 years. Took a chance and ran for governor of our state and uh, the voters chose otherwise, but it was a great experience. And uh, I began my service here in this room. The first day we were sworn in, the Vice President of the United States welcomed our entire class right upstairs where you will go for a reception. Dr. Billington approached me a few years ago from my legislative responsibility at, uh, as the ranking member of the Legislative Branch Appropriations Subcommittee, which funds the Library of Congress, and he said, the Great Hall is the centerpiece of the Jefferson Building, and the architect of the Capitol is programming the new hall in the CVC through a tunnel in the middle of the Capitol, and they're calling it the Great Hall. <laughs> and how can we have a Great Hall on each end of a new tunnel? <laughs> So we came up with the idea to name that Emancipation Hall to honor the slaves that built the Capitol and do two good things at the same time, including uh, taking care of this. I think it was the movie Australia where the central character said as the movie began, when it's all said and done, all a man really has is his story. And Ron just talked about these stories. And boy, did they have them. And we really had never extracted them. And I want to tell you a quick story of one of those stories to share with you what it meant to me. I was on the Legislative Appropriations Subcommittee when Ron introduced the legislation, so I knew about it immediately, and I knew that the Library of Congress was going to be uh, the home for the Veterans History Project. And I said, we want to try to do it as big in my district as we could, and we recruited our major public hospital and our largest bank in our state, First Tennessee Bank, and our NBC affiliate to be sponsors of the Veterans History Project for two years. They put up large sums of money and ran a great public relations campaign with House Ethics Committee approval on how we could do that. And every Friday night, there would be extraordinary stories of our veterans who had turned them in, and they would advertise it and bill it and run billboards and encourage all of our greatest generation veterans to come out and tell their stories. Well, I grew up in Eastridge, Tennessee, just outside of Chattanooga. And I'd known a man named Fred Pruitt my whole life, but he had become the mayor of Eastridge, Tennessee. So many people knew him. His family had never heard his story because like many of our veterans, it was buried deep inside of him and it was a painful story. So he didn't share it with his own family and not until he saw the advertisements and was drawn to share his story, did they ever hear his story. And it brought great emotion to he and my family because his father, he and my father were great friends. And so they really shared with us what it meant to them to have that. Well, like many of these veterans, in the middle of this whole process, he died. And I spoke at his funeral. And at his funeral, which was about four times as many people as are here tonight, on a screen about this large, they played his story. And as I walked out of the space that night, people stood in line to tell me they had no idea about that part of Mayor Fred Pruitt. They were there to honor the man, but they had no idea what a man he really was. So there are times where you're involved in something that truly is a lot bigger than we are. 
and that's the Veterans History Project. So 10 great years, Colonel Patrick, you are to be saluted. Uh, Dr. Billington, you are to be revered. This project is to be appreciated and protected, and uh, the good things of America must be preserved, and we are doing that. Thank you all. I want to turn this over to Colonel Patrick, who is, uh, uh, is the man, really, who runs this wonderful staff. But uh, among the various people that we want to, I want to mention, people have been kind to keep mentioning me, but this, this program is also uh, located within the Archive of American Folklife, which is a wonderful, uh, rich collection of the stories. You mentioned stories of the stories of Americans, and so this goes into that that uh, particular uh, region, and I know Peggy Bolger, who's here, the head of it, and her associates uh, also deserve credit for their support and, and their interest in uh, magnifying the reach into the rich folklore of America, uh, which is part of the more popular part of our culture, which is uh, created by a special act of Congress. So I want to give them credit too for all the support they've given. Uh, and, and now Colonel Patrick will shape us up. I call Dr. Billington my commanding officer on occasion. So. This evening you'll hear from volunteers and veterans who are representative of the thousands of contributors who are the life force of the Veterans History Project. Their passion fuels VHP, donating collections to us while touching and enriching communities, organization, and the lives of veterans and their families. And we have four people who are going to speak this evening who are going to cover those points. Kathleen Lurch is an educator at Park Tudor School in Indianapolis, Indiana. Since 2002, she has incorporated VHP in her students' curriculum and community service activities. To date, her students have conducted over 500 VHP interviews. They've published four books. They're getting ready to publish their fifth, all of which highlight the Veterans History Project. But Catherine represents hundreds of educators who value VHP as an educational tool that connects generations at the high school level and university level with veterans in their community. Ladies and gentlemen, Catherine Lurch. Well, I do bring greetings from Park Tudor School in Indianapolis to our Librarian of Congress, Dr. James H. Billington, to Colonel Bob Patrick, Director of the Veterans History Project, to Congressman Ron Kine, to Senator Richard Luger, whose magnificent support of our partnership with the Veterans History Project is much appreciated. And I bring greetings to our honored veterans, volunteers, and guests who are with us this evening. During the past 10 years, students at Park Tudor School have completed, as Bob Patrick said, more than 500 interviews for the Library of Congress. This truly has been an opportunity for them to make history. For our veterans, students, students' families, and for me, this has been a wonderful experience. It's been exceptionally rewarding for all of us as we've made connections with veterans across Indiana and across the country. To give you a sense of what the Veterans History Project has meant to my students, here are some thoughts from Julianne Sicklesteel, class of 2007. I cannot count the number of times since coming to college that I have referenced my work with a legacy initiative, from the experience of recording and editing the extremely personal story of a veteran's wartime experience to managing and collecting stories for our multiple books. The things I learned and enjoyed have stuck with me. I was able to interview my grandfather about his experience in World War II. I learned about his youth and his battle experience in a way which has made me feel much more connected to him. To look a veteran in the eye as he tells you about storming Iwo Jima was a once in a lifetime experience. And with many of our World War II veterans slipping away, the capture of their stories is an invaluable national treasure. The students of Park Tudor School have gained far more from this experience than I could have ever imagined when we began our partnership with the Library of Congress in 2002. 
But words from our veterans, though, say it best. Ray Miller was a B-17 co-pilot stationed at Defham Green, England. His interview allowed him to share his gratitude for the best training in the world, for the superb leadership that led to successful victory. For him, this project has great value because it showcases the determination of the American military and the spirit of American people when faced with perilous situations. World War II Navy veteran Jim Bays served in the Pacific. He felt it was his obligation to share his story so that fellow Americans could get firsthand knowledge of what took place on the battlefield of war. Mr. Bays' words, without the Veterans History Project, the stories of courage and bravery, we'd be lost to history. For B-17 pilot Roland Martin, getting asked to tell his story opened a memory vault of 65 years. Martin told of his painful experiences only twice. For many years, Martin had bad dreams about those pulse-pounding missions. But participating in the Veterans History Project has been a catharsis, and there have been no bad dreams since the interview. Martin sees a lasting value in this project for historians, psychologists, and anthropologists, and believes that students will become legacy carriers. Thank you for what you're doing, Mr. Martin writes. It will outlast us all. Looking back on getting interviewed by his nephew, United States Marine Frank Urbans writes, my interview brought back experiences that I had filed away for more than 40 years. Most importantly, it made me proud to be able to talk about my Vietnam service with a young person who valued what I had done and was anxious to hear my reflections on a war that was never very popular. This was important for me because upon my return from South Vietnam, there was not a lot of praise or interest in those of us that had served. However, I serve proudly, and to this day, being a Marine is one of the most important experiences of my life. As veteran stories have begun to shift from World War II to Korea, Vietnam, and the Middle East, Park Tudor School remains committed to the Veterans History Project as a service to the community, as a personal and informative link between the generations, and as a superb teaching tool. History does indeed come alive for many of my students. They have all been partners in an extremely worthwhile activity, and many of them are becoming, in the words of Roland Martin, legacy carriers. The Veterans History Project, as well as our Legacy Initiative Project, represents but a small thank you for our veterans who have done so much for all of us. Thank you very much for the opportunity to offer our congratulations. God bless our veterans and those who serve in harm's way today. Thank you. As I said, Catherine is one of many educators. And we have other, other, other educators who are with us here this evening. Uh, Barbara Hatch from Cactus Shadows High School in Arizona, who is, uh, I was telling Catherine beforehand, also put together a great program out there, very reminiscent of what's going on in Indianapolis. Marty Potts from uh, Loudoun Valley, uh, Loudoun Valley College, uh, High School here in Virginia. Charles Harrell from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Jonathan Bickle from Pennsylvania. And uh, on the university level, I'm very pleased to have Dr. Michael Brina from the Indiana College of Pennsylvania. It's a great project uh, and it, that educators have taken on and are, and are using it as a part of their curriculum. The National Court Reporters Foundation and the National Court Reporters Association devote resources to dis transcribed interviews from the Veterans History Project collection. To date, they have transcribed over 2,000 interviews. Tracy Ray Dunlap is here to tell us what it meant to her personally to record and transcribe interviews for the Veterans History Project and why it's important for citizens to devote their time and talent to the project. Tracy? Thank you, Colonel Patrick and Dr. Billington, members of Congress, and all the fellow volunteers who have joined us here this evening. And of course, a heartfelt thank you to all the veterans who are here joining us in the audience and those who are in our thoughts and prayers as we uh, commemorate this 10th anniversary of the Veterans, Proce veterans History Project. Excuse me. Um, it's my honor and privilege to be joining you and representing court reporters across the country. Uh, we've 
devote as much of our time as we can individually to transcribing audio recordings and live interviews. I've personally transcribed over two dozen interviews and um, I must say more than one occasion I felt myself choked up as a veteran is reliving his uh, personal stories and, and recounting um, great events that, that he's done in, in honor of our country. Um, my father is a Vietnam veteran and his younger brother Daryl, his Daryl's name is down here on the uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Uh, we have a number of family members uh, from home in West Virginia who have given their time and uh, sacrificed in so many ways to uh, help keep this country free. And um, I was drawn to the concept of the Veterans History Project just as a way of giving back to all the veterans and um, providing a written record for future historians, for family members who can go back and, and read uh, what their, what their uh, uncles, brothers, sisters, mothers have devoted and uh, the time they've given to uh, help keep us a free nation. And uh, I've also encouraged my fellow court reporters, family, friends to share their stories, take time to uh, transcribe their, uh, their histories and, and collaborate with other members of their community, Boy Scouts, you know, VFW auxiliaries so that the Library of Congress can continue to build their collection. And um, it's just, uh, it's really overwhelming sometimes to think of all the uh, sacrifices that our veterans have made. And it's my privilege and honor, and I just can't thank you all enough for uh, inviting me to say a few words. I know it's not very eloquent. I'm not a very good public speaker, but I, uh, I do appreciate being here this evening, and, uh, and thank you all. Thank you, Tracy. And we also want to thank uh, Mark Golden, who's the executive director of the uh, National Court Reporters Foundation, who's here this evening, for the great support uh, they have given to us. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs has supported v uh, VHP actually from the very beginning, from the Office of the Secretary's level, through the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs, Voluntary Services, the Center for Women's Veterans. As Dr. Billington mentioned, uh, they are conducting Veterans History Project interviews at over 50 VA medical centers. And of course, there are many people behind all of that. Uh, someone who came to us uh, to incorporate the Veterans History Project in her part of the Department of Veterans Affairs is Renee Allen, who is herself a United States Army Gulf War veteran. Uh, but she is also the chief of the Center for Minority Veterans at the Department of Veterans Affairs here in Washington, D.C. Renee, I'd like to introduce you and have you come to the podium for your comments. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow veterans. Today we are here to say thank you and celebrate 10 years of the Veterans History Project. I was asked to speak on what this means to the VA, but before I address that, I would like to say what it means to me. As a veteran, mother, sister, aunt, an employee of the VA, I say it means a lot. I have learned so much in my 10 years with the VA about the service, sacrifice, and honor of veterans who serve this great nation. I still get emotional when I think of the different outreach events that I have attended and passed out literature about the Veterans History Project to veterans. I remember encouraging veterans to share that story. Over half will say, well, I didn't do anything important. I didn't receive any significant award. And I always say, well, how about doing it for your grandchild? that daughter, that son, that wife, that husband, to leave something behind of what you did, and you did so proudly. The Veterans History Project is all about recognizing the accomplishments and services of everyday men and women who proudly serve this country. VA and the Veterans History Project have worked together since 2000 on a variety of initiatives to meet common goals and service to our veterans. Educational tools provided by the Veterans History Project allow VA to honor our veterans by recording their histories. These tools are used by VA volunteer services, offices in the Office of the Secretary, such as the Center for Minority Veterans and the Center for Women Veterans, in which we partner with the communities in capturing these stories. 
Now, history has been, been defined as a field of research which uses a narrative to examine and analyze the sequence of events. And it sometimes attempts to investigate objectively the patterns of cause and effect that determine events. To VA, history means the field of research that narrates sequence of events and reflects on the story of what happened. The VA looks forward to working together in the future with the Veterans History Project to ensure that veterans of all conflicts, all races, all genders <laughs> and ethnicities and all branches of services have the opportunity to share that personal story. Thank you, Veterans History Project, and wishing you another successful 10 years. Thank you. I would also like to point out we have other organizations who are represented here this evening who are doing great things for veterans. And one of them is the uh, Branson Veterans Task Force. Eric Dixon is here somewhere. Uh, there's Eric. His uh, activity has done over 1,000 interviews for the Veterans History Project. And we also have uh, Mike Seward from the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania Veterans History Project. He's doing great work up there with our veterans, uh, World War II veterans. Mike. Yes, Mike. But now let's talk about the veterans themselves. Over the last 10 years, we have become indebted to tens of thousands of veterans from World War I to the conflicts of today, not only because they served their country, but also because they opened their hearts, opened their minds, shared their personal recollections of their military experiences. We have one veteran here this evening, Brian Markle who was a Vietnam and Persian Gulf War veteran. He and his late wife, Jean, also a Vietnam veteran, were interviewed about their experiences back in 2000. Their story is one of the most treasured ones we have in our archive. Jean passed away last year, but I finally recall that she and Brian were here in this great hall back in 2004 to mark another milestone that we were celebrating. Tonight, we are honored to have Brian with us to briefly reflect on the importance of VHP to the individual veteran. Brian? The Honorable Richard Luger, U.S. Senator, Indiana. James, the Honorable Ron Kind, U.S. Representative, Wisconsin, and Congresswoman from Tennessee. Dr. James Billington, Librarian of Congress, fellow veterans, volunteers, and supporters. As I begin, I want to thank God for his glory and for his great blessings in my life. I deeply thank him for my 43-year marriage to Jean Urban Markle, a soulmate and teammate honored by the Veterans History Project. I found a Veteran History Project booklet that quoted my wife Jean and decided to start with it. It reads, Brian and I were honored to tell our Vietnam story for the Veterans History Project. Our reflections of our war stories. Mine is an Army nurse in Vietnam and his two tours in Vietnam, plus his service in the Gulf War, have made it possible to preserve our living history voices for our children and all future generations. Jean was from Kiwana, a small town in northern Indiana. I'm from Springfield, Ohio. We met at Fort Carson, Colorado, and soon wed, and soon we're on our way to Vietnam. For nearly 43 years, we experienced many places together. Part of Jean's story is beautifully written in the first Veterans History Project book titled Voices of War. The Veteran History Project benefits for veterans are numerous. For me, three important benefits stand out. The first is legacy, a word Jean always used. We raised three children and produced seven grandchildren. For our children, grandchildren, and their future children, our recorded stories are a magnificent legacy. I marvel at how many families will be able to find and take pride in their ancestors' stories recorded by the Veterans History Project. All veterans deserve this opportunity to be remembered, that their service and sacrifice for our country might not fade and be forgotten with the passage of time. My mother became a guardian for her grandfather 
and the mementos and memorabilia of her grandfather, Albert Austin, private, and the Ohio Volunteers. It stirred a devotion in a growing young man. Written letters from each battle location is our family's early version of the Veterans History Project. A priceless legacy was preserved. Today, the Veterans History Project records all stories to give all generations in the United States and the world personal records of service that will not fade and be erased. The second benefit for Jean and me was the opportunity to meet veterans and supporters from varied generations and branches of military service. All were a treasure and a beautiful phase of our lives. We met special people like Walter Morris of the Triple Nickel World War II Parachute Company. Walter sat with us when we went to Palm Coast, Florida in the, introducing the second book titled Forever a Soldier. Walter sat with us on the stage in the National Book Festival in 2007 when we were interviewed about the Veterans History Project 2008 calendar. Jeffrey Woolen, Indiana University Photography and School of Fine Arts professor, put Jean in a special book. The book was titled Inconvenient Stories, Vietnam War Veterans. The Veterans History Project has been a wonderful catalyst for bringing people together. The third benefit is for me personally. There are many untold, unrecorded stories. In our experience, veterans may be unaware of the Veterans History Project or not ready to release their feelings about their time of service. These are significant stories that, are always, that always deserve a chance to be recorded. Recently, I returned to Ohio for my 50th high school reunion. I read a tribute to a classmate. He was killed in Vietnam and he was decorated with a Distinguished Service Cross. But his story is not in the Veterans History Project. It is a great story of bravery and sacrifice. I intend to work with his family to have his story included. A friend organizing a reunion has two U.S. Marines and her family. Her father served in World War II and her brother in Vietnam. Her brother is not ready to release his feelings. She continues to encourage him. She wants the legacy to continue and their sacrifices not to be in vain. She told me if the day arrives when he's ready, she will call me to get the stories completed. And I pray that the Veterans History Project will be there when that day comes. Many have dedicated years of their lives in service to your nation, and many made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives. I encourage each of you to record the story of a veteran, a family member, a friend, a buddy. Make that commitment to yourself and to a veteran. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express thanks to the Veterans History Project on behalf of Jean and myself. I especially want to thank the Library of Congress and every member of Congress for making such a program available to the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. There are two other veterans here tonight I'd like to recognize. Uh, both of them are World War II veterans. Both of them have participated in the Veterans History Project. The first is Mr. Terry Shima. Terry, would you stand up, please? Terry is a member of the historic 447th Combat Regimental Team from World War II, who's also collected. And the second is Judge Maurice Braswell, who is sitting in front of me here. Judge, could you please stand up? A World War II veteran who's a prisoner of war. You need to read his memoir. It's absolutely stunning. Judge, great to have you here. Thank you for all those who've made remarks this evening. It's people like these and thousands of other contributors and veterans across the nation who are the reason the Veterans History Project has reached this milestone moment. Tonight is, in essence, a reunion of the veterans, the volunteers, the members of Congress who've all come together for this common purpose, and that is creating this wonderful archive that is called the Veterans History Project. Though tonight we're looking to mark the accomplishments of the last 10 years, I can't help but be drawn to looking a little bit to the future, to the next 10 years. In my view, tonight is an opportunity to share the past in order to illuminate the future. To help us strengthen this foundation, one thing we're doing tonight is announcing 
a new initiative we have within the Veterans History Project. We're asking all Americans, everyone across America, to pledge just what Brian just said. Interview the veteran in your life, be it a father, a mother, a sister, a brother, a neighbor, your barber. And we'd like to show the PSA that was just shot uh, last month to kick off this initiative. Uh, if you run the PSA, please. Hello, I'm Jim Billington, the Librarian of Congress. There are more than 17 million wartime veterans living in the United States today. Each of these brave men and women took an oath to serve this great nation during times when many had to make the ultimate sacrifice. Now they have the opportunity to tell the world about their personal experience through the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. This congressionally mandated program collects, preserves, and makes accessible the wartime stories of those Americans who served during the two world wars in Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Won't you yourself collect and preserve the story of at least one veteran? Help us gather in the accounts of 10,000 veterans by Veterans Day. Sign up at the address or call the number on your screen. Pledge to preserve this important part of America's history. We previewed this initiative at the National Book Festival that was here on the Mall last Saturday. We had 300 people make a pledge to do an interview for the Veterans History Project. This, this PSA is going to be shown, of course, through the Veterans History Project website. It'll be shown through YouTube, other social media. Just this morning, we did a uh, taped a segment with the Pentagon channels. So it'll be shown all around the world throughout the Department of Defense. So we're asking each of you, each of you when you came in probably got one of these cards, hopefully got one of these cards, that ask you to make a pledge. I don't have to talk to this crowd. I know I'm singing to the choir here. But take this with you. Go online. You can also make the pledge online. If you'd like to make a pledge this evening, we have boxes available here as well. But interview the veteran in your life before Veterans Day 2010. We're going to carry this on into the next year. This is just the initiative we're trying to push to get to 10,000 by Veterans Day 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here this evening. Congressman Kind, thank you for your support. Thank you for spending time with us. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.